Hey guys, this is Undercover Dudes all the way from Down Under, and today we've got some massive news about Ironsight that may completely revive this game. Now if you guys remember, back in December I made a video called Rest in Peace Ironsight, and I talked about every single issue Ironsight has and how Area Games has to tackle it. I do admit I was a bit negative in that video, but it was more so because I really do like this game and I want it to go and succeed, it's just a few issues are holding this game back. Well it seems like that video and the hundreds of comments you guys posted, they got through to Area Games because they posted a new HQ report and it seemingly is a direct response to that video and to everybody in that comment section that complained about this game. So we're going to go and break it down and I am really excited because there's a lot of hope for the future of Ironsight in this post. Of all the problems Ironsight has, the elephant in the room is the netcode. It just isn't good. It sucks. And the reason why is because Ironsight, it runs on TCP instead of UDP. Now for people that don't know much about networking, they would be thinking, okay, why is this such an issue? Well, TCP guarantees that a packet will be sent, while UDP just goes and sends it and won't wait for a confirmation to go and send another one. The reason why TCP is so bad in a first person shooter context is because if somebody has latency issues like a high ping, their laggy shots will still go and register and thus they can go and shoot people behind walls and it's very frustrating. UDP, when you have a very high ping, it just drops all of your laggy packets and says okay, the shots you're firing while you're lagging, they won't go and connect and that is very fair because you're the person with a bad connection, you're the one that's supposed to be suffering, not the people that actually are playing the game with a good ping, they don't need to suffer. Now in this blog they go and respond and they say, and I quote, the way the game was handled in terms of server client communication was optimized for Korea, where the internet connections are great, but it caused issues in the rest of the world. This statement makes little to no sense from a networking perspective, as the error detection and correction TCP provides is only really useful where data must not be lost, like a file transfer. So if you're downloading a file, if a packet is lost, it gets resent so the file is complete. Now when it comes to video games, you can go and drop a packet or two and it's fine. So I go and scratch my head why TCP was used as first person shooters are latency critical games and even with a near perfect connection there can still be hiccups. So using UDP from the start would have been a much more practical and realistic choice. Halfway through last year, there was a dialogue going between the developers, the publisher and us and they were saying, okay, we're working on the netcode fix, we're working on some other fixes as well. We got very, very detailed insights into how this was going to go and work and we got a timeline. It was going to be, okay, in September, the netcode switch was supposed to go live with the cruise update, but when it went live, it just completely failed. Massive server downtime and the netcode was then swapped back to TCP. After a very, very long period of basically no information, we finally have some news and it's a bit of a mixed bag. So let's go and read what they have to go and say. 1. The netcode needs fixing and it's a difficult task for developers. 2. We don't want to break the game again, but internal testing is also insufficient. 3. We have an internal patch that's being developed. And finally, 4. We will have a public test server to keep live servers safe while testing with as many people as we can. So this is a very, very big deal. A patch is coming soon and to go and ensure that the main servers don't go and suffer, they will go and try it on a test server. I want to go and take this moment to, on a side note, acknowledge that while I am a bit harsh at times with my netcode analysis and netcode, you know, critique and developer critique and all that, I 100% acknowledge how hard it is to completely change over the networking architecture for a game. And if this goes and works, it will be a massive accomplishment. This has been months in development internally and who knows how the game will go and behave when they go and let it loose on the public. So this whole test server thing is a really, really good idea. Now, with that said, it's not going to be an easy swap. It's probably going to be multiple tests. They're going to go and chuck it in. It's probably not going to go and work. The servers are probably going to go and crash a ton of times. But in this process, they'll get enough time to go and fine tune it. So in the end, we just have to be patient. They further say that there is no ETA for the netcode fix, no ETA for patches and so on, but more news will be coming soon. And they also say that there are more technical issues that are tied to the netcode and some that are not tied to the netcode and those have to be fixed as well. 
Now, while they don't go in list of these, they have been talked about in previous HQ reports, and they're talking about one, the physics engine, two, lag compensation, three, matchmaking, in particular, putting people with similar pings together, and four, how they go and handle people with bad pings. Overall, I'm happy with this response, but let's go and talk about the rest of this post before I go and make any conclusions. The next item on the agenda is the content of the patches, where people were complaining that they're making skins and not working on the technical side of Ironsight. Now they go and explain that they're a different team for art and coding, and because of the focus on the netcode, all they have had recently to go and put out is skins. Now this makes complete sense, and I don't think it really needed to be explained, and I think overall they missed the point of why the community was fed up, and that is the third item, the lack of communication. The problem with this whole situation was the fact that the developers were having trouble with the netcode, however area games did not go and communicate that fact, instead they went and green lighted putting out a ton of skins, and so we got really frustrated because we thought that the core critical issues for the game were just, you know, completely being forgotten, because no one was saying anything and the new, really useless content was coming out. It's a perfect storm and all it needed was a post, all it needed was a video maybe from a developer or something to go and clear everything up. But in the end, none of that happened and so we were just left in the dark. So I'm going to be honest, Area Games, they had it coming and finally we go and get this post, they're going to clear things up, but it is honestly a bit far gone into the process because community is already really, really fed up. They went and said that they're going to be putting out shorter but more regular HQ reports once every month or so, but again, that's still far too little communication. Regular posting on social media is needed to go and ensure that the community is in the loop, and hopefully after this very painful lesson of a basically four months without any real updates to the core game issues, hopefully they can go and understand that they need to go and keep telling the community what is happening with the game, make it very, very transparent, and hopefully that will be, you know, the case from now on. Now in this section, they also go and talk about the ranked mode and how it's pretty terrible. So it's going to be temporarily removed and then they're going to go and rework it from the ground up. Now this is a very good decision in my opinion, given that ranked was basically shoehorned into the game with no real focus besides trying to go and meet the esports criteria. So hopefully going back to the drawing board will go and focus the mode a lot more. Now the next section of the post is a bit of fluff, and then they go and talk about the future of Ironsight with a massive info drop, and I quote, After the netcode and following fixes, our list includes a few things that were already shared with you, going on Steam and releasing the game. Now I don't know if it's just me, but I've never seen them officially announce that Ironsight is going on Steam, so this is news to me. I've seen on Twitter, on Reddit here and there that they were considering putting the game on Steam, but nothing was concrete that it was going on Steam, and this is very much a confirmation that this game will be on Steam. I'm honestly pretty excited for it, especially as they said it will be coming after the netcode fix and after all the other technical fixes, so it's game first, then launch. A lot of other free-to-play first-person shooters, they make the mistake of just releasing the game on Steam whenever they really feel like it, without going and fixing the core fundamental issues. And this is really, really important that Area Games and the developer Whipple, Whipple Games, they go and stick to their promise, where they go and fix the core fundamental issues with Ironsight, they fix it all up, they make the game really good from a technical perspective, and then they go and release it. There is already a decent amount of content, we don't need new maps and new guns and new perks and stuff like that. From the content perspective, we're at a decent point for a Steam launch. It's just, we gotta go and get all the technical stuff right, and then go and launch it on Steam, and I think this will be a really, really, really good game to go and round out the whole free-to-play section. Because we've got Black Squad, that's more like Counter-Strike Go, free to play, you know, tactical type stuff. Then we've got Counter-Strike Go, Go itself, but we don't really have a game that goes and feels that Call of Duty vibe. And Ironsight is definitely that game. It's fantastic from a gameplay perspective, it just needs to be fixed up. And so hopefully that will go and happen. Now to go and round out the post, they talk a little bit about how there's going to be more content, more features, better game balance, better game mechanics and so on in the future, and then a little TLDR just summing up the post. Overall, I can go and say that I'm content, I suppose, with this report. It answers some of the questions that we've had, but it doesn't really go and give us anything solid, which is what we need. 
Everything that I said in my Rest in Peace Ironsight video is still applicable today, and sooner or later we need some big changes to go and happen. At this point, Ironsight is in a bad spot because the community really is fractured and they're not really, you know, in sync with the game. They don't really think it's going to have much of a future. In terms of the gameplay itself, bloody fantastic. Ironsight is one of my favorite free-to-play first-person shooters, but it needs to really be fixed. And not really too much when it comes to the gameplay side, maybe a few balance changes here and there. Technical side, yes, but... What needs is a shift in perspective. A shift in perspective is needed so the community can have a bit more faith in the game and so they can go and come back. But the only way that can go and happen is with big updates. The next steps for area games and Whipple games are going to be very, very important ones. We need some very, very big moves happening soon. If we go and see a test server and we go and see the fix and it doesn't really work that well and needs to go back and they go and get some data from, you know, public testing, Fantastic. At least we've got a little bit of movement. But if we see nothing for one or two months, then people are going to become, again, very agitated and people are just going to stop, you know, worrying about Ironsight altogether. You can only go and give a game so many chances before you go and just let it go. And a um, great example of that is Combat Arms. People just completely forgot about the game after Nexon was just completely incompetent with their updates. So overall, I give my best of luck to the developers and the publisher, and hopefully we can go and revive this game again, because damn Ironsight is a very, very good free-to-play first-person shooter. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, make sure to go and hit that like button, and subscribe for more Ironsight content. Bye for now, it's Undercover Dudes, all the way from Down Under, out.